Hey, this is Ryan with Sawdust and Stuff, and today I thought I'd show you a new tool in the shop. We went big. This new tool is the Thunder Laser Nova 51 100 watt. 35 inch by 51 inch cutting capacity and 100 watts of power. Now as you can imagine, this crate is huge and it took a good amount of work to get it to my shop. I actually called a flatbed tow truck company who picked it up from the local shipping department and brought it right to the front of my shop. And that's what you're seeing here. Now in this video, I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step instruction of how to set up your laser. What I am going to do is show you just how quickly the process of setting your laser goes. I'm going to do that mostly by video, but I'll pick out a few things here and there that I think are really important and I'll fill you in. The first thing you see here is me with the help of my dad pulling apart the crate. It's pretty much just Phillips head screws, some brackets on the corners, and a little creativity. The crate is big, there's some sharp nails, be careful, I'd suggest gloves, I didn't wear any, and I was just fine. So you will be too. The big thing here is just to get your laser out of the crate and onto the ground. Alright, so we need to get the laser off the pallet. And to do that, what we've done is we've just taken some of the scrap pieces of plywood. We're going to try this, I don't know if it's going to work. We just slid them underneath here, outside or inside the wheels, so that if we slide it just down the ramp until the wheels catch on the ground, I think we'll be good. Stay tuned. Now if I had to do it all over again, I'd recruit another set of hands for this part. You'll see later I did get another friend who came to help me out, but it wasn't at this part and I knew this would be tricky. So as we're pushing here, you'll just see that it doesn't actually go as planned and we kind of have to audible. And we just decided that we would let the machine take a little bit of a fall and risk any damage. We didn't have any damage, so it worked out and the laser was just fine. Something I didn't show, but I should mention, is that the wheels, all four of them, were locked when they came on that crate. So before we pushed it off, we did have to go underneath and unlock those wheels just to make sure everything did roll smoothly. And once we find it to its ultimate position in the shop, we went ahead and locked those wheels back up. Now that it's out of the crate, I've got to get it into that back corner you can see. I've got a really small shop. It's about 12 by 20, and this laser is way bigger than I anticipated. And so I've got to just get everything moved out of the way and push it on back there. Nothing too exciting, but it is a part of the process. Again, I'd recommend having a couple sets of hands here because the machine is big and it just worked out easier that way. Though, if you're big and strong, you probably can do this on your own with a little creativity. The biggest reason I chose Thunder Laser was their support. This includes the customer service from their US-based offices, but it also includes the communities on places like Facebook of people who own these machines and want to work better to strive and help each other out. So I'm sitting here now with all the accessories that came with the laser. We've got the compressor, we've got a toolbox with all the tools you need, we've got a fan, we've got the rotary accessory, that is extra, does not come included in the machine. We've got the control box and the laser behind me. All this is needed for your laser. Let's get started on how we go about setting this thing up. We're gonna start with the water chiller, which by the way came with my machine, contrary to most laser engravers, that's an extra expense, but I digress. Just grab your distilled water in a funnel and go ahead and fill it until this little gauge on the back is somewhere in the green. I lean towards being cautious, so I filled it a little more towards the top, but you can fill it anywhere in that green. This toolbox comes with your machine and inside is everything you need to set up this laser along with maintenance and things along the way. There's a lot of cords here, so I started pulling them out and making sure that I knew which piece was gonna go where. It was altogether a pretty easy process, so I'm not gonna talk too much about this. One of the things that makes this so easy to set up is that every little port you see there has a label in English of what it is. That means there's no second guessing, just make sure you grab the right cord and make sure you hook up both sides exactly where it's labeled for you to do so.
Once that water chiller is all figured out, you can grab the air compressor and it's pretty much self-explanatory how this goes. Just make sure you've got a power source and make sure that you connect this to the laser. Again, using the labeled ports that they provide in English on the back of your machine. One thing I'll add about this compressor is that in the end, you'll want something underneath it to soften the noise of when it rattles and moves and shakes on the ground. So I don't show it here, but what I did is I grabbed a piece of foam, just some acoustic foam that I used in my shop, and I put it underneath there, and it's not been an issue for me. Once the water chiller and the air compressor are hooked up, not in their final spots, but good enough for now, I went ahead and pulled out the exhaust fan. This is a unit that a lot of people installed on the road with an upgrade, but I decided to start out to just install what they provided. This is responsible for pulling out all the smoky fumes that the laser creates, and so I do think it's a good idea to upgrade it, but starting off again, I just used what they provided. The laser comes with this fan, which pulls out of a bracket that you can mount on the wall, and it also came with the pieces to connect this tube to both the laser and the exhaust, but also from the exhaust into the wall port that you're going to see in a minute. Something that I think I should mention is that this port is actually an 8 inch port when I was expecting a 6 inch. So what you're seeing me do here is cut the exhaust port through the wall, the back wall of my shop, as a way of exhausting all of the fumes outside of my shop. This is a 6 inch hole saw and I'm going to go ahead and condense the 8 inches down to 6 inches. But when you get your machine, make sure you do your research and know how big this hole should be and what you prefer here. I do think I'd probably have better exhaust if I went with the 8 inch, but I didn't have the resources to do that this day, and so I just went with the 6 inch. Once you've gone through the wall, just go ahead and grab one of these dryer vents. It's in your hardware store. You'll find it in the ductwork section, and it's just going to go ahead and allow you to cover up that hole and make it look presentable. See, isn't it pretty? You would never notice. I'm sure there's way better ways of doing this, but I'm a hillbilly and don't really care. So I just took this clamp and this tube and I connected it to my six inch duct work and I just tightened it as much as I could. And then I just took some duct tape and tried to wrap it together to seal it a little bit better. And then I backpedaled really hard. Still used some duct tape as you see, but did buy a six inch to eight inch coupling. You didn't think I was that much of a hillbilly, did you? All that's left is hooking up this final tube to this exhaust, going ahead and organizing where your chiller, your compressor, and your fan are going to be, and then you just get to plug the machine in. You'll notice this blue plug has a little twist at the end. I love that feature because it lets me not accidentally unplug it. And once that's done, you've just got to turn your machine on. Your machine should pop on, so should the water chiller, and you should be ready to test all the limits and the movements on this machine. And that's really all I've got for you. I just wanted to show you how I got my machine from the crate into my shop and moving around just like this. Now, I have never owned a laser before, and so the videos to come, I'm going to be focusing on tips and tricks, resources, and most importantly, how to make money with my machine. Thanks for following along. I hope you subscribe, like this video, and leave me any comments with questions you might have. See you next time.